Hi everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and today I am sharing all of the books on my physical TBR in the historical fiction genre. As you can see, I have one shelf here that is empty, and that is because those are all of the historical fiction books on my physical shelves that I have not read, and I am sharing all of them with you today. I thought it'd be kind of fun because they're historical fiction to go through in chronological order when they take place. That'd be fun. I did all the figuring out of years and put them in order and let's get started. So the first one is Finishing Becca by, who's this even by? Anne Rinaldi. This one is a story about Benedict Arnold and Peggy Shippen and how she influenced Benedict Arnold's betrayal in the Patriot Forces. Ta-da, that's that one. It sounds kind of boring, but it's been on my shelf since I was like 12 years old and I kept it because it has my name in the title. So that'd be fun. I'm also gonna put these back on the shelves in this order because I think it'd be cool to have them in chronological order so I know about when they take place. Cool. I should have said, Finishing Becca takes place in 1778. So it's my earliest. Next, in the mid 1800s, we have The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. This one is about two young enslaved men on a plantation in the South and their forbidden love for each other. So sounds super good. This one was a book of the month a long, long time ago and I didn't end up choosing it, but then found it for super cheap at a thrift store. So I was happy I was able to pick it up there. Next, clocking in. In 1864, we have Cold Mountain by Charles Fraser. This one is the story of a soldier's perilous journey back to his beloved at the end of the Civil War. This one, I think, is a very famous book. I mean, it is the National Book Award winner from this seal. So I also picked this one up at a used book sale. And I've had it on my shelves for quite a while, but never picked it up. So there's that one. Moving into the 1900s, specifically 1912, we have Titanic, The Long Night, a novel about the unforgettable disaster. And this is about one woman's journey on the Titanic. I think it's a romance. A woman in lower class falls in love with a first class boy. Sounds like the movie Titanic, which I love, so I am all for. Oh, I didn't say this one is by Diane Ho. Ha? Don't know how you say her name, but anyway, again, picked this one up at a used book sale. Text is huge, holy smokes. This one you can get through really fast. Moving right along, we have The Ice Cream Queen of Orchard Street by Susan Jane Gilman. Uh, this is in 1913, and a woman flees Russia in 1913 and ends up in Manhattan in New York and must figure out how to survive with nothing. This one, let's be honest, draws me in because ice cream is in the title. Next, we have Bittersweet, which is World War I, so 19, what, 14 to 1918. Uh, this one is about two sets of twins. The four Latimer sisters are as close as can be. Although famous throughout New South Wales for their beauty, wit, and ambition, the young women are not enthusiastic about their limited prospects in life at the end of World War I. Each sister has her own dream. Etta wants to be a doctor, Grace wants to marry, Tufts wants to never marry, and Kitty wants to be known for something other than her beauty. I have sisters myself, and I feel like I could really relate to this one. Then we are moving on to the 1920s with St. Maisie by Jamie Attenberg. And this one surrounds Maisie Phillips, the owner of a famous movie theater in New York City during Prohibition. And it sounds like she has some secrets. Maisie's diary is found 90 years later by a documentarian in search of a good story. And so she finds out who Maisie Phillips really is. Next, we have The Paris Wife by Paula McLean. This one is in 1920s also, and this follows the wife of Ernest Hemingway and their life together in Paris. I'm a sucker for buying a book that has Paris in the title. I've been to Paris multiple times, speak a little bit of French, and like I said, we'll buy lots of books with Paris in the title. <laughs> Next, we have A Spool of Blue Thread by Ann Tyler. This one is also in the 1920s and it sounds like a grandmother is telling her love story to her grandchildren. I have read Ann Tyler before and she just came out with a new one that I'm really, really intrigued to read. And this one has been on my shelves for a while and I need to get to it. 
very soon. Next, coming in at 1927, we have The Aviator's Wife by Melanie Benjamin. This is the story of Anne Morrow Lindbergh, the wife of Charles Lindbergh, who is the first to have a solo flight across the Atlantic. I love a good story about powerful women, and I feel like she was one. Then we have Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. This is set in 1929, and this is the true confessions of one of Japan's most celebrated geishas. Next, we have The Lacuna by Barbara Kingsolver. This is about a man who takes an odyssey-like journey from Mexico City to the United States. It sounds like art and history play a huge role in his life as he has friends such as Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. This one sounds very good to me, especially because I have been to Frida Kahlo's house in Mexico City. So I think it'll be fun to read this and picture where the character's story takes place. And I should have mentioned, this one takes place in 1929 also. Moving on to the 1930s, we have Rules of Civility by Amor Tolls. This is about a young woman in the 30s who meets a wealthy and handsome banker and becomes semi-famous in New York society. Next on the shelves, we have Oh My Stars by Lorna Landvik. I think this is one of my mom's favorite authors. Let me know if I'm right. Mom, a woman in the Great Depression tries to travel west to California, but breaks down in North Dakota, which is where I grew up. So I know that that is a desolate country there. So it's a tale of love, hope, bigotry, betrayal, loss, and discovery. Another author my mom loves, Jodi B. Colt. This is The Storyteller. This is about a woman who tries to escape her loneliness, bad memories, and grief of her mother's death through baking, I think. This one's in the 1940s. Next, we have one of my favorite authors, Kristen Hanna, Homefront, this one is called. In the 1940s, it explores a troubled marriage in a time of war. I will probably get to this one this summer. And if you aren't already aware, I'm trying to read all of Kristen Hanna's books in the summer of 2022 as a reading goal of mine. One that has been on my shelves since living in my parents' home is The Postmistress by Sarah Blake. I think it's my sister's book. This is about a postmistress who doesn't deliver a letter during World War II. So 1940s. It sounds really good, but for some reason I just have never picked it up. Next, I have Sarah's Key by Tatiana De Rosne. De Rosne? I don't know how you say her name. Sorry, Tatiana. This one takes place in Paris in 1942. 10-year-old Sarah is arrested with her family, but before uh, they are taken by the police, Sarah locks her younger brother in, a, in their favorite hiding place. Then we jump forward 60 years, and an American journalist stumbles upon, upon Sarah's story, which causes her to reevaluate her, re her own life. This one sounds really good. I love World War II historical fiction, so I'm sure I will love this one when I get to it. Then we have The English Patient by Michael Odachi. Ondachi? Michael Andanchi. <laughs> I don't know. This one it takes place, let me look at my little sheet here, 1945, um, and it traces the intersection of four damaged lives in an Italian villa at the end of World War II. Moving right along, we have Montana, 1948. Says it right in the title. It takes place in 1948. This chronicles the events of a small town summer and how it changes one boy's view of his family. It's a tale of love, courage, power, abused, and the terrible choice between family loyalty and justice. It's a short little ditty, so it should be easy to read. And I think it's a classic, maybe. You tell me. Have you heard of this one? We're in the last stack of books, everyone. Uh, let's see. Next, we have Cutting for Stone, which is in the 19 takes place in the 1950s. This is a family saga that takes place in Africa and America about doctor, doctors and patients, exile and home. I think I took that directly from the synopsis. Looks good. Who's it by? Abraham Vergesi. Putting it on the shelf. The shelf is filling back up. Okay, one of my most anticipated reads, just because I started listening to a podcast a while ago, and it is the host's favorite book of all time, which is Peace Like a River. It takes place in the 1960s by Leif Anger, and it is a story told by an 11-year-old boy about his family and their journey across the frozen badlands of the Dakotas. They are searching for his fugitive older brother. Sounds like a cool epic tale, but also I think focused on life lessons and such. Then we have Beautiful Ruins by Jess Walter, which takes place in 1962. This is the story of an almost love affair that begins on the Italian coast. 
and resurfaces 50 years later in Hollywood. Love a good historical romance. Then we have The Help. I know, I've never read The Help. I saw the movie a long time ago, but never read the book. This one, if I'm remembering correctly, is about a young woman who comes back to her hometown after graduating college and tells the story of the women or the maids that take care of the white children of the South. We're down to two books. Second to last, we have Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. That's it, Jeffrey Eugenides. I'm going with it. If it's wrong, don't tell me. This takes place in 1967. It's a multi-generational story of a Greek American family traveling from a tiny village in Asia to Detroit, Michigan. Sounds like there's some secrets in here and I really, really love multi-generational stories. So I think I will enjoy this one if I ever get to it. And last, but certainly not least, on my physical TBR for historical fictions. We have Deacon King Kong by James McBride. This takes place in 1969. It is about a shooting and about everyone that is affected by it. Not only the victim, but those that witnessed it, the cops assigned to investigate the murder, and the community that the shooter was from. So I've heard wonderful things about this one, and one woman in my old book club highly, highly recommended it, and I am looking forward to reading it. Plus the cover is super, super cool. So those are the books on my historical fiction shelves. Let me see how many there are. 26 books. I think that has beat out my classics shelf. But what we're doing with these physical TBR videos, I would love it if you would comment down below which book I need to read next from these 26 historical fictions. What ones did you love? Tell me which ones maybe you didn't like, but what do I need to read next? Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.